This flight is just a quick 35-mile repositioning from Edinburgh to Glasgow without any passengers on board. A good opportunity to get you checked out on the Bombardier CRJ-700. While we're waiting in line for takeoff, I'll explain a few things. Flying a modern jet isn't really all that different from flying a small prop plane. There are just a handful of key differences. The first thing you'll notice is how different the instrument panel looks. Instead of many small, round mechanical instruments, there are just a few large computer screens. Most of the information is the same, but the presentation is different. World travel 221, hold short runway 6 right, traffic is a 747 and final. Holding short 6 right, world travel 221. That call was for another aircraft. We're orbit 526. I'll handle the radios during this flight, so don't worry if you miss anything. I'll tell you what to do. The display on the left is the primary flight display, or PFD. It combines multiple instruments into one display. The blue and brown section in the middle of the PFD is an attitude indicator. The vertical tape on the left side shows airspeed, and the tape on the right side shows altitude. At the bottom in the middle is a horizontal situation indicator, which shows heading, and to the right of that is a vertical speed indicator. Glass displays like these take some time to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, you'll love them. The display to the right of the PFD is the navigation display, which shows a top-down view of the aircraft's position relative to navigational aids and the flight planned route. You can change how the map looks by using the format and range knobs on the left side of the panel. Try it now if you want to. Okay, the third display is the Engine Indication and Crew Alerting System, or ICAS. The default page shows engine information, gear and flap positions, fuel quantity, and warning and caution messages. You can scroll through the different ICAST screens by clicking the up and down buttons at the bottom of the display. Each screen provides information about a different aircraft system. For this flight, keep the engine gauges showing on the ICAST. The top gauges are labeled N1. As we fly, I'll give you suggested thrust settings. Use your joystick throttle lever or the F2 and F3 keys to move the N1 needles to the settings I suggest. The rows of buttons and knobs just below the windshield is the mode control panel for the autopilot. We won't be using the autopilot on this flight, so don't worry about any of that for now. A big difference between jets and piston aircraft is that in a jet, the engines take a while to spool up. This means that if you add or reduce thrust, there will be a slight delay before your action has any effect. This fact, combined with the jet's higher speed, means that you need to plan ahead. World Travel 231, packed into position and hold. Position and hold, World Travel 221. Jets have flaps, just like piston aircraft. They're used during takeoff and landing to increase both lift and drag. Lower the flaps to 20 degrees for takeoff now by pressing the F7 key three times. You can see the flap indicator on the ICAS. Orbit 526, hold short, run these six right. We'll hold short six right, orbit 526. Okay, follow the 737 ahead of us, but hold short of the runway. Release the brakes by pressing the period key and apply some thrust to get us going. Stop here. One last thing. During the takeoff roll, I'll call out four speeds. When I call 80 knots, glance at your airspeed tape to verify it's moving and indicating approximately the same speed as mine. When I call V1, it means we're at the speed where we're committed to taking off because there isn't enough runway to stop at that point. When I say rotate, gently pull back on the stick and rotate the nose into the air. Finally, I'll call V2 when we reach the minimum safety speed at which we can safely climb on just one engine if there's a failure. World Travel 221, winds can take off. World Travel 221, rolling. Orbit 526, taxi into position and hold. Position and hold, Orbit 526. Okay, we're cleared to taxi onto the runway, but not to take off yet. Taxi ahead and turn right onto the runway. Stop once you're on the runway and lined up with the center line.
Press Shift 5 to display the overhead panel and turn on the landing light by clicking the switch in the lower left corner. Then press Shift 5 again to close the overhead. Before we take off, let's review exactly what will happen. You'll control the aircraft, I'll handle the radios. I'll call out 80 knots, V1, rotate, and V2. When I say rotate, gently pull back on the stick to raise the nose to 15 degrees nose up on the primary flight display. I'll tell you to retract the landing gear once we're climbing. Once we reach 1,000 feet above the runway, I'll tell you to pitch down to 10 degrees nose up and to raise the flaps so we can accelerate. Our initial climb will be to our cruise altitude of 6,000 feet, and the departure controller will probably tell us to make a left turn to the west. I'll let you know when to turn. Orbit 526, winds are calm, runway 6 right, clear for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, Orbit 526. All right, we're cleared to go. When you're ready, use the throttle lever on your joystick or press the F3 key to add thrust. Start with 50% N1. Let the engine stabilize and then increase thrust to 100%.
Orbit 526, contact Glasgow approach on 119.1. Orbit 526, switching. Thanks. Glasgow approach, Orbit 526 with you. Orbit 526, Glasgow approach. Good morning. Reduce speed to 210 knots. Expect vectors for the visual approach, runway 23 at Glasgow. Glasgow altimeter, 29902. Slowing to 210 and we'll expect the visual for runway 23, orbit 526. Bring the thrust back to about 50% N1, then adjust it to maintain 210 knots. Since the weather's good, the controller will line us up with the runway and give us clearance to proceed to the airport visually once we have the runway in sight. Orbit 526, descend and maintain 3000. Descend and maintain 3000, orbit 526. Okay, we've got clearance to descend to 3000 feet. Reduce thrust to idle and gently push forward on the stick to take us down. Pitch to about 7 degrees nose down to maintain 210 knots as we descend. Orbit 526, reduce speed to 180 knots. Slowing to 180, orbit 526. Okay, now reduce thrust a bit to slow to 180 knots. Pull back on the stick a bit to keep the nose from dropping. Maintain 3,000 feet as you slow down. F7 twice to lower the flaps to 8 degrees. The flaps will slow us down, so bring the thrust back up to about 60% and 1, so we maintain 180 knots. Orbit 526, turn left heading 230, vectors for the visual approach runway 23, report the runway in sight. Left to 230, looking for the runway, orbit 526. Here we go, turn left to 230 degrees. We should see the runway straight ahead once we roll out. Okay, level off here at 3,000 feet and bring the thrust back up to about 50% and 1 to maintain 210 knots.
Okay, I see the runway. Approach, Orbit 526 has the runway in sight. Orbit 526, cleared visual approach, runway 23. Cleared for the visual, Orbit 526. Reduce thrust to idle and begin descending towards the runway. Lower the landing gear by pressing G and lower full flaps as we slow down. Press F7 three times. In a large aircraft like this, the speed you land at changes depending on how heavy you are. At our current weight, our final approach speed will be 130 knots. Adjust thrust to maintain 130 knots as we descend toward the runway. Orbit 526, contact tower on 118.8. Switching to tower now, Orbit 526, thanks. Glasgow Tower, Orbit 526 with you on the visual approach for runway 23. Orbit 526, Glasgow Tower, you're number one. Clear to land, runway 23, wind calm. Clear to land, Orbit 526. We're clear to land, so let's run through the before landing checklist. It's a short one. Landing gear, down. Flaps set to 45 degrees. Landing checklist complete. Continue descending. Once we're about 50 feet over the runway, reduce thrust to idle and pull back on the stick slightly to touch down on the main wheels first. Then slowly lower the nose. landing. Orbit 526, turn left next taxiway and contact ground on 121.7. Ground on 121.7, orbit 526. Turn left on the next taxiway. Once you're clear of the runway, stop, retract the flaps, and turn off the landing lights. Glasgow ground, orbit 526, clear of 2-3. Orbit 526, taxi to the gate, follow the 737 on the taxiway, all the way to the rock. We'll follow the 37, orbit 526. Okay, just follow that 737 on the taxiway. He's going to the same ramp, just a different gate.
Make a right turn into this area. Our gate is the last one on the right side. There's our gate at the end. Pull up to the jetway and stop. Stop here. Excellent job.